hopes of a peace deal in Ukraine as negotiations between Ukraine and Russia solidify. This is The Beautiful Truth with Fintan on reporting on the 14th of March 2022 at 4pm Eastern. Folks, uh, it looks like Zelensky, the comic at times current puppet leader of Ukraine, may be about to recognise the nature of his long-term interest and sit down to ink a deal with Vladimir Putin. Surprising as it might seem, a peace deal opportunity is actually on the cards. The Russian advances into Ukraine have been moderate in terms of civilian casualties despite propaganda internationally. They have taken mainly areas where Russians would expect little resistance and they've been in designed to intimidate a military response and prevent such a response and to start a civilian uh, refugee crisis which would uh, pressurise the opposition. And those uh, aims have been successful and I think the real politic of the situation is now beginning to impress itself particularly on Zelensky. I'm sure that in the preliminary negotiations between uh, Russian and Ukrainian negotiators, they would have emphasised to Zelensky that the West has absolutely no interest in his long-term future, whereas Putin and Zelensky have a long-term future together. Putin, in fact, does not want to take over Ukraine, does not want to occupy it, does not want to make it back a part of the Soviet Union, and does not want to recreate the Soviet Union, again, despite the propaganda you may have heard to the contrary. Now, his limitations are that that would be an open sore, which would continue to just rot away Russia in its southwestern frontier. No, that's exactly what was intended to be done to Russia when Putin had to suffer the same New World Order people who have caused chaos in Ukraine doing it in the Caspian in order to generate a terrorism problem for Russia. So the game is quite well known now and beginning to become very clear internationally. Along with the protestations for the invasion, uh, we have the counterpoint that surely this is just another repeat of an endless series of successful liberations by the New World Order neocons. The liberation of Libya, for example, which is now prospering in freedom and democracy, as we can see. And indeed, the liberation of Syria, which again, just look, prospering again thanks to the intervention of the New World Order neocons. Now, it was Vladimir Putin who saved Syria from that fate. And it is Vladimir Putin who is saving Ukraine from a similar fate. And Zelensky is certainly smart enough to realise that, as are those in the German and other European power establishments who have the long-term interests of Europe in mind. They also know that what's been going on in the background is an attempt to destabilize an emerging geopolitical relationship between Russia and the European Union. A relationship which would continue to underpin Europe's energy needs into the foreseeable future. And Germany needs those energy supplies because thanks to the machinations of the Anglo-Americans, who have been interfering in Europe's affairs, Germany's burdened with a green movement which is effectively throttling its economic performance. And also, we have the attempt to prevent Germany from having access to, to fuel, to fuel its economy. So, Vladimir Putin is in effect conducting a, uh, what you would have to call a, Oh, surgery in order to remove a, a, a tumour. Neoconitis is, is the illness from which uh, Europe is suffering at the moment with, with a tumour. And uh, you, this is accompanied by symptoms of neoliberalemia, uh, which is an inability to make economic progress due to the machinations of an Anglo-American power elite determined to destroy Europe. So, in a sense, uh, what Vladimir is doing here is he's doing Brexit 
Brexit 1.0 was not a UK decision to leave the United Kingdom, powered by popular deter determination to exit. No, in fact, it was a decision by the UK establishment to bail out of Europe and to unleash the dogs of exit to facilitate the exit. But of course, despite leaving Europe, they weren't going to stop meddling in it in order to prevent something that is contrary to Anglo-American interests, and that is an emerging basic economic integration between Europe, Russia and China. That would be a problem for the USA, whether it's Trump or whether it's Biden who's in the White House, because Trump was banging the same drum, attempting to intimidate the Germans into buying expensive American gas instead of cheap Russian gas. So these have been the power politics behind all of this and a continuation really of the COVID because just as back on the 7th of January, I did announce the victory against the totalitarians who had orchestrated that entire COVID phenomenon. Uh, and that was in, in subsequent weeks, followed by the withdrawal of the mandates in the United Kingdom and indeed the triumph over Trudeau. We must remember then that Trudeau, of course, is, is just another pawn of Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum. Uh, something he claimed that Putin was too, there's no evidence of that. In fact, it seems that someone who was once regarded as, as a hopeful accomplice to the World Economic Forum's agenda has turned into its implacable enemy. And Zelensky, introduced at Davos by Klaus Schwartz in recent years to address Davos, I suppose you could regard him as, as uh, Pierre Trudeau with a sense of humour and shorter legs. And that whole crew are going down. And just as we, ordinary individuals who fought against their totalitarian COVID agenda, have managed to succeed, and just as the American people will this November completely reject these individuals, then the move by Vladimir Putin to excise the cancer which was in Ukraine and enable Europe to live in peace into the future was inevitable and another sign of a victory for the rest of the world against these people. We still need to get answers on what happened with COVID and who and why that happened. And we need accountability on all that. Hopefully we'll get it. But most importantly, we need the machinations to create a World War III bleeding sore in Europe, which will hamper Europe's onward march, must be stopped now. And those with sense will stop it. But it will be led out of self-interest and mutual interest from Zelensky and from Vladimir Putin by a deal hopefully in the days ahead before or even on the day that Irish eyes smile the 17th of March. Putin needs a quick solution, needs to stop the carnage to enable a peace deal to take place. Zelensky needs a protector. Those who offered to protect him are now just offering to fight to the last Ukrainian. That's not much use. It is indeed Putin who will underpin the independence of Ukraine. And I think Zelensky will see that. And those in a, in a position to affect events will see it. We're not out of the woods yet. This will be a catastrophe for those who have created the crisis in Ukraine but I'm hopeful it will be achieved in the days ahead. I'll be back with more and further updates on the situation and also any solidity on that as soon as I can get certainty on it. But as it stands now on the 14th at 4 p.m. Eastern, it looks like we have an opportunity for peace in the days ahead. Let's see if it does indeed come to fruition. That's it for now. I'll be back with more soon. I hope you can join me for that. But in the meantime, for breakfornews.com. This has been Fintan Don reporting. Thanks for joining me.